it's Mika. So, I know that a lot of my subscribers are really, really interested in Harajuku. And I feel like a lot of you, if you came to Japan, you would definitely come to Harajuku. So, for the past few months, I've been kind of eating in Harajuku and seeing what the best places to eat are and the most interesting foods and things like that. And I've been filming them for you so that when you come to Harajuku, you know what to eat. Let's begin with the list. So, let's start with a classic, which is the Harajuku crepe. I'm not sure if you know this or not, but Harajuku is actually famous for crepes. You can find them on pretty much any corner. Outside, you can see the typical Japanese display, which shows the crepe unrolled. That way you know exactly what you're getting. As you can see, there's so many flavors. You can get sweet ones, but also savory ones. They're surprisingly good because the crepe isn't actually that sweet on its own. They make it right in front of you, and when you get it, it's nice and warm and fresh and delicious. The price really does depend on which crepe you order, but I would say on average it's somewhere between 350 and 600 yen. I got one with strawberries and cream and custard and chocolate sauce, and Mel got one that literally has a piece of cheesecake in it. Needless to say, we both thoroughly enjoyed our warm, sweet crepes. Next up is Cookie Time, which you definitely can't miss. It's a store which I believe is originally from New Zealand, but there's also a store right here in Harajuku. And as you can guess by the name, they specialize in cookies. We specifically came to try out the no-bake cookie dough because, if you ask me, cookies are just better unbaked. It came kind of looking like ice cream. You can choose whether or not you want it on a cone. I chose not to because I'm not a huge cone person, but Max did, and look how adorable it is. We were lucky enough that they actually recognized us and so they offered to let us try some other things. So we ended up trying their milkshake which was amazing. If you have a sweet tooth, this is definitely for you. This one was actually Harajuku themed which I think fits perfectly with this video. We also tried their s'mores ice cream which was literally the size of my face. And if you're someone who needs their cookie fix at home, you can buy some. If you're a fan of cookies, this is the place to go. Next, let's go for something savory. This stall outside Lotteria sells these really long fries which were actually really trendy at one point. They sell various other street foods as well, but I remember seeing the fries on social media before I even moved to Japan. I was starving at the time though and fries alone were not gonna cut it, so I decided to try the rice wrapped in meat. And here are the fries in their long glory. The fries are actually famous for being a little bit chewy, which they were. They were pretty good though. It was interesting that they weren't just long fries, but that there was something different to them as well. I cannot recommend the rice wrapped in meat enough. It was absolutely delicious. Salty and saucy and savory. It was everything you could need for a quick snack. Next up is the Kawaii Monster Cafe, which I would definitely say is a Harajuku classic. They definitely put in a lot of effort to make sure that you feel like you've been transported to another world from beginning to end. The decoration is so well done. This is definitely one of those places where you're paying more for the atmosphere than for the food. I mean, it's genuinely impressive. Like ceiling to floor, everything is decorated to fit the theme. I can't even imagine how much time and effort it took to make it look like this. They also have a stage in the middle that looks like a cake where the dancers dance sometimes, but we didn't manage to catch a show. Even the menu is like a little touchpad to make it look a little bit more futuristic. But my favorite part is of course how the girls are dressed. They are so cute and they were so nice as well. I decided to pick the food items based on what I found to be the most unique and interesting. Of course, to make the most of the experience. The first thing I decided to try is this stack of pancakes with a chocolate-covered strawberry ice cream. I thought the design of it was really cute, and as far as pancakes go, it was pretty decent. The next thing I tried was this thing I think they called cat food. It was kind of like a mix of cereal and ice cream and candy floss. I wasn't entirely sure if I liked this one. Next I decided to try what they called a science experiment, which was a lot of fun. And the drink ended up tasting like an unspecific fruit. I couldn't decide what flavor it was. Next, I decided to try this milkshake with popcorn on top, and it actually ended up being my favorite, which really surprised me. The milkshake kind of tasted like vanilla, but the popcorn was salty, and I guess I liked the mix. The Kawaii Monster Cafe can definitely be a little bit expensive, but it's worth the experience at least once. 
Speaking of Harajuku classics, there's also Totti Candy Factory's Rainbow Candy Floss. I would describe the inside as how a kid would imagine a sweet shop. All pastel and bright and cute. Other than candy floss, they also sell these cute little cake pops. I got the little bunny. You get to watch them make the candy floss, which is a lot of fun. You get to see them adding colours one by one and layering it up until it looks like this rainbow cloud. Do you see how massive it is? I mean, look at the candy floss and then look at my head. A fun thing about it is that each colour is actually a different flavour, but I would definitely recommend that you share this with someone because it was very difficult for me to finish by myself. Next is the cheese hot dog as they call it, which is another thing that's kind of trendy online right now. I believe it's originally a Korean food, but I might be wrong. It's a street food that basically consists of a block of cheese surrounded by fried potato and it's absolutely delicious. It comes completely plain, so you have to salt and sauce it yourself. This is a really satisfying snack. It's got the crunchy potato on the outside, and on the inside you've got the melted cheese, which as you can see, I was having a bit of trouble eating. I highly recommend it. Next is Cafe Ron Ron, which is definitely, hands down, the cutest buffet I have ever seen in my whole life. To start with, you get to choose your drink, and I chose the cherry blossom one, which I highly recommend. It was really good. And then, as you can see, it has one of these sushi-style rotating tables, which is so cute and such a fun idea. So you get to pick these tiny, cute little desserts off the sushi table, and it's all you can eat, and I just can't recommend it enough. I went on a little girly date with two of my friends, and we all enjoyed it so much. Not only was it so cute and such a great atmosphere, but the food was not only unique, but also delicious. However, if you can, I highly, highly recommend going during school hours. I'd finish school early, and as you can see, it's so quiet, but another time when I went, they asked me to wait more than an hour, so I I ended up not going, so plan ahead. If you're someone like me who loves seafood, I recommend giving Luke's Lobster a try. I believe it's originally American, but they do have one in Harajuku as well. They sell these lobster rolls, which are just amazing. I highly recommend it. I really like these kinds of street foods where you can get it really quickly and easily, but it's still super delicious. I decided to get the soup set, which that day was clam chowder, and I love clam chowder. And the lobster roll was buttery and rich and just delicious. Next up is the Cosmic Girl Cafe. The Cosmic Girl Cafe is basically this cafe that's based around an artist called Okokume, who made the character Cosmic Girl. The idea behind Cosmic Girl is that she levitates near humans to influence them to make good decisions. With that in mind, Cosmic Girl Cafe really focuses on things like superfoods and making healthy foods. So they only use natural colorings, for example, my cupcake was colored with beetroot. And it was also actually gluten-free, which really surprised me because it was so moist. Sorry for saying moist. The smoothie was also delicious. I'm not so keen on the mint flavoring at the top, but when you only drink the bottom, it's just such an amazing smoothie. It's a great place for those who want a guilt-free treat. The next place is Silbing, which is selling one of my absolute favorite foods right now, which is Bingsu, Korean shaved ice. I cannot stress this enough. I know it doesn't sound appealing, it's just shaved ice, but I, I can't tell you enough. It's amazing. I don't know what witchcraft they put in it, but it's so fantastic. Like, even now, I'm stressed that I can't eat it. Like, watch me eat this food. Like, I cannot resist. And I keep going, and it's genuinely draining my wallet. And I, I can't stress this enough. If you have not eaten bingsu, you have to eat bingsu. It's creamy and sweet and refreshing and melts in your mouth. And the crunch of the ice and the fruit mixed with the cream. I highly recommend. Lastly, we have Eddie's Ice Cream, which is just the cutest little ice cream shop. Not only is the entire store pink, but the ice cream themselves are so cute. They decorate them so nicely. I also love how the store itself is decorated. I think they kind of have something with the K-pop group Red Velvet. But my favorite thing is these old phones on the wall. I think they're so cute. 
I decided to go for the unicorn one which actually had some candy floss on it. I highly recommend that. I didn't think that candy floss and ice cream could go together so well, but it really does. It's really tasty. And there you have it. There is my list of my favorite foods in Harajuku. Please comment down below which foods you think are most delicious, or if you have any other recommendations, please do let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.